Hi, Jamie. And Shannon's here. DC Daydreaming's here. Isabel's here. Hello, everyone. How are we doing? Hopefully you are all okay. I figured I'd leave the tin on view today to show you guys what I'm going to be working with. So I am going to be working with the normal castle pencils over the top of these. But we're going to carry on with this image from World of Flowers tonight with some more watercolour pencil painting. So those of you that are my regulars will probably notice a new feature at the bottom of the live stream and that's the badges feature. So basically with the badges, if you choose to treat me to a badge, it just gives a little bit of support to the channel and it puts your comments and things as priority on streams, bits and pieces. This is my first time churning on badges. So if you feel like treating me to a badge, please do go ahead. So let's get going. I'm gonna move these out of the way. Pop these on the table out of the way and let's let's get going. So I was finishing these off last time. I haven't actually done anything in between this time. So let me just um, get rid of the comments out of the way so I can zoom in on my phone a bit better. There we go. So yeah, hopefully you're all doing well. Nice to see you all. Thanks for dropping in. So you might have remembered from the last time I put an initial layer of the watercolour down on these leaves just towards the end of the stream. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish off with ordinary pencil over the top. So the two watercolour colours that I put down was this juniper green and sap green. So this is in Castle Arts watercolour pencils. So we do actually have the same colours in the ordinary colouring pencil. So I'm going to go ahead and add these over the top. So the sap green was the darker out of the two. So I've already tidied up a couple of these leaves, but we just need to do a little bit more work on these smaller ones here. So I'm not pressing very hard with these pencils. They're nice and soft for blending with. I don't want to lose the overall effect of the watercolour pencils but what I'm doing here is just tidying over some of the areas where the pigment is not quite as dark as I would have wanted it to be. It just sharpens this colour up a little, tidies the whole thing up. So if I transition over to the juniper green, so this was the lighter of the two shades that I used. Again, I'm just going to tidy up some of these edges. Do you see where we have these little run marks from the watercolour? I just want to tidy that up very slightly so that it's not quite as uh, not quite as patchy. So I'm barely touching. Hi, Ajuma. So I'm barely actually touching the sides of this, just enough to smooth over any lumps and bumps. And then I'm going to add the watercolour on the other side and get on with some of these other palettes that I've got organised. So on this one, do you see how we've got like a little run mark there? That's okay, but I just want it to be just a little bit smoother than it already looks. Let's just give it the lightest dusting of this pencil over the top. I think I'd already tidied that couple up because that's looking quite good. There we go. Right, let's get on with a little bit of a little bit of painting. So I'm going to do exactly the same on this side, but with the watercolour ones to start with. Just reminding myself which is the darker of the two shades here. It's the sap green. So I'll just show you the colour there. So that's the sap green colour 113. So again we're in Castle Arts watercolour. I'm going to go ahead and do the matching leaves on this side. So it'll be a good opportunity for me to show you those Caran d'Ache water brushes again. Because there is one with like a fibre tip that makes it look a little bit like a felt tip pen. And it's really good for sort of narrow lines like this. Do you know what? I think I'm actually using the wrong 
me just try this on a piece of paper because I think I might be using the wrong one first. Let me just check this out. Yes, I am. Good job I noticed that before I did too much more. <laughs> so I'm going back with the juniper green. Thinking, hang on, I've got these back to front. That doesn't look as dark as the other side. I'm just going to colour straight over the top of that. Once I activate it, it's going to merge those colours together anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Okay. So these Castle Arts watercolours that I'm using, they're really nice, um, high arty, really, really nice um, colours. The beauty of these watercolour pencils is they're nice and pigmented. And they'd be really good to just use as ordinary colouring pencils. So if you didn't want to have both sets, you could probably do most of what you wanted to do just with the watercolours on their own. They do blend really nicely, the same as the ordinary colouring pencils as well. But with this set, you've obviously got the beauty of being able to use them either wet or dry really. I'm just going to add this darkest colour onto the leaves first. I think I'm just going to spin it round to do this slightly longer one here. It's going to add a lot more of this pigment at the base of the leaf here. So with leaves like this, sometimes you can look at them and be a bit put off by all of these nice lines and markings and things. What I tend to do with leaves like this is, unless I'm wanting to make a feature out of these spaces, I will just apply colour over the top and just leave the black lines as sort of decoration. So you'll notice here that I'm not really staying within the lines on even the, these smaller ones because I'm just quite happy to use the leaves as background decoration for these. Okay, so do the same with this one. So I'm going to add the darker colour in first. And then where I'm going to introduce the other green, you just reduce the pressure of the pencil slightly so that you have a natural blend line to introduce that other colour into. So we'll just do this couple as well. So I'm a little bit more organised tonight. I've got a couple of other um, colour palettes ready on the desk, unlike last Thursday managed to get organised this evening. Here we go. So I am going to swap over to the, the sap green now. So I don't know why I got them muddled up. So this is sap green number 113. And where I've just eased off on the pressure, I'm just going to add some of that different green over the top and then always leave yourself with a small white area. And that's where you would be adding in the, the water, basically. Lindo, says Flavia, thank you very much. So just add a good amount of this over the top. do this with this one as well so where I've eased off on the pressure here I'm just going to introduce the other colour what was the other one the first one or the one I'm using now Jamie if it's the first one it's oh god I can't even remember the colour juniper green and this is sap green that I'm using so yeah those of you just um, on stream you might notice uh, that we've got a new badge function at the bottom of the screen so this is basically a new way for you to help the channel along a little bit. If you buy a badge, it gives me a, a small amount basically, which I can then use to reinvest in other colouring materials to show to you. So it's my first time using the badge function tonight. So if you do feel so inclined to treat me to a badge, I would be most grateful and very happy. sort of seen it on other people's profiles thought what on earth is this all about and um and had a little look and, and that apparently is what it's all about oh there's dominique as well hi jolly jazz so i'm just going to keep 
rotating this round a little bit just to make it slightly easier. So sorry if it's making you guys a bit seasick there. Hannah's late. Oh dear. Don't worry, Hannah, you're never late. You can always watch this on catch up. So I'm just gonna squiz all this round again. You are right, Dominique? It's gonna just integrate in both of these greens together. And then when we activate with water, it just helps the colors merge. And we're gonna use more than one of these water brushes on this one again. It's just got a nice amount of color over here. There we go. Right, so I'm going to do the leaves first. I'll do the the stalk second. So let me show you the water brushes. So sorry for you guys that are regulars on my live because you've heard all this before. So I use the Caran d'Ache water brushes. Um, I favour these rather than other makes that I've tried because you actually control the flow of the water here with this push button. So what you don't get with these is a load of pooling of the water all over your book. So you fill them with the plunger here. And it just takes a few squeezes of the water button to get it to start to activate. So the only time I find these brushes slightly hit and miss is when you very, very first get them going. Smell was in the shower. <laughs> oh dear, I hope you didn't cut a nice shower um, short just to watch this, Samantha. I'm just going to get that going. That looks like we've got some good water flow now, so I'm just going to test it on the back of my hand. It's the best place to test it before you put it on the book. And that's coming through nicely. There's no pool in there, so we should be okay. What's the buyer badge thing? So the buyer badge thing is a new thing for Instagram creators. And basically what you can do is buy a couple of badges. I think they start at like 99 pence or something. And what it does is it gives the creator, in this case myself, a few extra pennies after Instagram takes their little cut. And then I can reinvest that back into other colouring supplies to share with you guys on stream. And that's basically the idea of it. So I think if you buy a badge when you're on the um, live stream comments, it kind of prioritises your comments and it like marks you in a different colour and... Yeah, so it's new. So this is the first time I've used it tonight. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see how we go. So with these, I've got a tiny bit of pooling going on with the brush. It's only because I've only just woken the brush up. It will settle down. So all I'm doing is where I've got like these little areas of extra pigment here. I'm just going to lift those while it's still wet. You see it moving around there? I'm cleaning my brush and I'm just lifting that pigment away. So always have a little bit of kitchen towel or something handy to wipe your brush on. And while this is still wet, you can move it around um, as you want to. So the idea with these is where you've left the white space here, you just get the water brush going, activate a bit of that pigment. And then because we're doing a two color blend light into dark, you just move the pigment one into another little circular movements with the brush is best and then you see that green changing into that darker color so where we've got this little pool going on I'm going to pull it right into where the stem is and then again you use the tip of the brush just to lift this pigment oh thank you Hannah <laughs> it's showing you as pink now how cool is that love it <laughs> oh bless you thank you Right, let's swizzle this round. So do the same with these guys here. So where we've left this little white area, we just activate, pull the pigment down. And again, we're gonna correct this with ordinary coloring pencils. So if you get blotches and things, you don't really need to worry. And then where we've got the darker green, I'm just gonna merge that one into another. And again, take it down to the base of the leaf and then just wipe away the excess. So the reason that I finish off my watercolours with ordinary colouring pencil is because unlike Derwent ink tents, these are going to reactivate every time you wet them. So if you're not happy with your first layer and you go in for another little go, you may end up with a soggy mess and some bleed through. 
So what you can do with any Make of Colour pencil is use them over the top just to tidy things up. And that way you'll save your page from crinkling, you'll save the bleed through and potential sort of holes appearing in paper and things. I mean, the quality of Johanna's paper in her books is, is pretty good, but you're still going to get a little bit of wrinkling when you use watercolours and things. Derwent ink tents are slightly different. They're made of Indian ink, so I do tend to do two layers with those. Haven't really had any bleed through issues or, or holes appearing in paper, but I wouldn't recommend that you do that with watercolours because you're just going to keep reactivating everything all of the time because they're, they're made out of different stuff. So I'm just going to keep spinning this one round slightly so I can get the right angle on this. Sorry if I'm making you guys seasick. This little guy, I can't be too particular with this little guy, so I'm just going to activate it again and then I'm going to tidy it up with ordinary pencil over the top. So I'll show you this other water brush in a second when we do the stem. Just get this big leaf done as well. So the same principle with this one. I'm just going to activate the lighter colour, pull that into the white area here. Hi Linda! And then activate the colour going backwards, so light to dark. So you can see wet or dry, these Castle Arts watercolours have a really nice pigment to them. And you can use these wet or dry. So it does save a few pennies on the pocket if you don't want to have the normal set of colours as well. There we go. So I'm going to show you this other Caran d'Ache water brush. So if you buy the set of three, you get one that looks a little bit like a marker pen so this is really good for tight areas like this stem where you might struggle to get a water brush in so i'm going to get this one filled up and then we'll give this a little go i've put the water behind me so i don't spill it now i can't reach it all right let's get this filled up don't need an awful lot of water in this one because there's not many stems that i'm going to be doing tonight Oh, thank you. <laughs> right, let me show you this one. So this one we fill and get this going in exactly the same way. So I'm just going to push the little button to get the water to go down into the nib. And what I did find with this one last week is it was quite keen. So I'm not going to get this one going with quite as much water as I did with the brush one because I don't want a puddle. So I'm just going to check this on the back of my hand and the tip of that is, is wet. I've got paintbrushes from the post office but you have no paint. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> so everything that you can see me using this evening, um, if you go into my bio, there's a link to my Amazon storefront there. So all of these products are there. Everything that you see me use is featured there. So wherever you are in the world, you can get the idea for your local Amazon. If you're in the UK and you do purchase something through my storefront, it does provide me with just a few pennies of commission at no extra cost to you. And I just plough that back into more colour and supplies and things. So that's always appreciated. And that's all in my bio for you. I was getting so many messages from people saying, what brushes do you use and where do you get them from? And I want to buy X, Y and Z, can you tell me where you get them? So I've gone with the Amazon storefront, it seems to be working quite well. There we go. So do you see how that's activated all along the stem but we've actually had no bleed either side of the line? So that's a really good sort of use for this bullet tip water brush and although there's a bit of pigment on the end there, you just keep wiping on the towel with fresh water and it comes clean again. So it's a really good little brush to use. So let's have a look at some more leaves. So I'm just going to spin this round this way so that my hand is out of the way of all the, the wet area. So next couple of colours, hopefully you guys are ready. So our next two, we've got teal green, which is number 105, and hooker's green, which is number 054. So I'm just going to keep that. Oh, you haven't used the red one yet. You have to let me know what your proper name is, um, Mrs. Colour Lady, so I can add you to my list. 
just keep those there so you guys can see for a couple of seconds more so the darkest one on this one is going to be the hooker's green so i'm just going to get a nice tip on that one but it's funny there's a lot of people that are saying they've bought the karen dash water brushes after seeing them on here and it, i wish that i'd kind of bought these first before i'd wasted a load of money on some of the other makes because they really are a game changer Right, so onto the Hooker's Green first. This is our first colour. I thought it might be quite nice to have a sort of a bluey green to go with these flowers. So what I'm going to do is a two colour blend again, but I'm going to go from the middle out to the sides with this one. So I'm just going to add a little pop of this colour from the centre. So this is a nice bluey green which will hopefully look quite nice with these flowers. So there may be um, another live stream coming up before next Thursday on Instagram. I'm still waiting to firm that up with somebody because I'm going to actually have a guest colourist on with me. So as soon as I've firmed that up with him, I'll put the details in my story. But I'll probably be working on this still while he's working on something else. but there will be the usual live stream over on Facebook on Sunday. So same principle with this one. Just add in a pop of color of this first one, leaving lots of white space around those edges there. And then when I activate these, I'm gonna have to be super careful near the petals because I don't want to to get that blue flower edge wet and then have all of the colours sort of smushing one into the other. Give us an interesting look but it's not a look I'm going for. So one interesting thing to note with these Castle Art pencils is they do a set of 120. So how do I remember which colours go together says Hannah. Um, I have a list. Um, last week I have like a like a jobs pencil case, which I'll show to you guys. So if I'm halfway through a project, I will put the colors I'm using in this particular pencil case, and then I'll just make a rough note of what I'm using. But because I'd finished off what we were doing last week, I wasn't having to play catch up tonight. I just looked on my color chart and chose two colors that go together. So I have no idea what these two are gonna look like together. We'll find out as soon as I activate them. So sometimes it's just um, sheer dumb luck, <laughs> really, and, and playing around with the colours. But what you want to do is do some safe colour blending. So you're not going to see me doing things like blending a brown with a green or blending, say, a red with a blue or something else like that. You, if you go for safe colour combos, you're pretty much guaranteed that they're going to work each time. So if you're not very good with colour choices, can I share my list? You're lazy. <laughs> I'll think about it. If I can find my list, that's the problem. Sometimes it's on scrappy little pieces of paper and then I have to re-watch my own video back to see what colours I've used. It's a bit rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, what I was saying about these, um, these sets, so with Castle Arts, they do a set of 120 colours for both their watercolour and their standard pencils. Now, something weird I've noticed with them is you would think that the 120 set would be like for like, but in the watercolour set, there's colours that don't correspond over to the ordinary colour and pencil set, which is randomly strange and something to just keep your eye out for, because I've had to substitute quite a few colours which is okay, but you would think that they would carry the colours over. So I'm moving into teal green now, so 105. We're still in the watercolour session. Oh, hi Leone, hello, you've bought a badge as well. Thank you very much. It's very exciting. It's the first time I've had badges turned on. So same as usual, I'm leaving myself with a little bit of airspace around the edge here. That's where we add the water brush in and start to get these colours merged together. So I am over colouring some of the first colour that I've put on. 
which just helps them to blend better. And again, I'm not pressing very hard and look at all this pigment that's coming off. Really nice colours. Really hoping it doesn't look shocking when I activate it with water. We'll find out in a minute. So we'll spin that round again. To put a light on, we're losing the light so much earlier at the moment in the evenings. There we go, just add some more of that in. So I'm trying to go as quickly as I can with this so that you can see me do some other things tonight as well. I haven't decided what I'm going to do as a background for this yet. Um, I may use ordinary castle art pencils to do the background because I think I'm going to get in quite a mess trying to get the water brush in these narrow spaces. I'll see, I'm going to have a think about that. But yeah, there'll be some more work on this on Monday evening, hopefully. With a really lovely guest colourist who's um, going to pop on with me. Right, well, we've got the book this way, let's carry on. What did I use for the shiny prettiness? I can show you exactly what I used for the shiny prettiness. So I seem to have um, broken the mould in my own Facebook group with these pens. There's been um, a lot of excitement in the here in people in the UK because Clinton's has these particular pens on offer at the moment. Oh, Liz, you know exactly what that is. <laughs> you all know what I'm like for these particular pens. And I'll show them to you. Absolutely delicious. And if you don't have them, you're missing a trick. God, if I was on commission for these particular sparkly pens, which I'm not, by the way, the number of times I mention them, I'd be a rich woman on a tropical beach by now. Literally. So funny. My wife's just sniggering in the corner. It's wishful thinking, isn't it? Yeah, it is wishful thinking. <laughs> shiny, says Liz. I know they are shiny. So we were on holiday last month and in the middle of a random stationery shop, I found four new colours. I was practically jumping up and down like a kid. It was terrible. <laughs> terrible. That's how good they are. Okay, let's get this activated and then I'll show you the pens. So I'm just going to check, check this little gizmo here is still awake, still in the room. Yes, you are. Test on the back of the hand. There's no pool in there, we're okay. And again, we're going to work from, oh God, you've been stocking up, have you? Oh, Hannah says, hi, Catherine. She's waving. She's in the middle of Titanic. She's very busy. She's obviously not in the middle of Titanic, literally, because, you know, that ended badly. But she makes models and she's in the middle of putting Titanic together and it's looking fabulous. So I've actually got access to my colouring desk because Titanic is on her knee. Yeah, I saw that, Mrs Colour Lady, that they're three for two. I was telling Catherine that while we were eating tea and um, she suggested we go and visit. I'm obviously not going to say no to, to that kind of invitation. There we go. So these are quite pleasing together. You can definitely see the bluey tinge to them. So I think that's a reasonably good match here. So let's be super careful around the edge of this, this little flower because I don't want to drag the blue pigment off of there. We also don't want this to be quite that patchy, so I'm just going to lift some of this pigment up and then we'll correct that with ordinary pencils as soon as it's dried off a little bit. So same again, we activate from the edge, change to small circles and then we put the pigment into the middle and just lift up there where it's pulled slightly. And again, we're just going to have to sort of do this one backwards. Nice and careful into the middle there and just lift that loose pigment away. So I'm having to spin this round a little more than usual because I don't, purely because I don't want to put my hand through this while it's wet. So if I'm making you seasick, I do apologise. 
it is unfortunately a trade hazard when you're working with wet mediums. So that is a really nice colour combination, so I may have to just write that down for future use. I'm liking that a lot. Swish it round a bit again. See, I've actually got a flower middle that could do with a sparkly finish. So while this is drying, I'll show you those pens. Just reactivate the other set of leaves as well. While we're at it. Just making sure I've still got that in shot. So that is really, really nice. I'm liking that a lot. Nice and subtle. So again, I'm just going to be nice and careful around the edge here. It's going to just put a bit of that pigment towards the edge of the leaf and then work it back in towards the middle. And just lift the little bits of pigment away. Here we go again. So I don't know how many of you have got castle art, so if you've got these watercolour pencils or other ones, and if you have, how are you getting on with them? I'm quite liking them. I've got the Arteza ones as well, but I think some of these are a bit more pigmented than the Arteza ones so far. I need to really do a complete piece in the Arteza ones to give them like a proper comparison. I don't know if any of you guys have got those sets and what your thoughts are on which ones you prefer. Just take this in gently into there. There we go. Let me show you these pens then while that's drying up a little bit. So, the sparkly pens that I use are these. So they're called Pentel Dual Hybrid Metallic Gel Pens. They have a classic set and a mellow set. So these are all the classic colours, which I'll show you quickly. So if I just move it around under the light, so you can see just how blingy they are. Oh, that's interesting. The Aquarella are quite good. It's not a brand I've tried. So these are the four new colours that I found in that stationery shop and I've actually used this one and this one on this watercolour piece that we're working on at the moment. And then the mellow set is slightly different. So these ones have a base colour and up to three colours of glitter running through them as well. So as you change it, you can see they go to different colours. I'll show you what the pens look like. See if I can find one of the mellow ones and one of the ordinary ones to show you in this pot. Uh, here we go. So this is the classic set, the dual metallic. So with these ones, um, they're a different colour on white paper and black paper. So you can use those um, in maybe some of your Maria Troll books that have got the already black backgrounds to add some effects. That would look quite cool. And then this is the mellow set, so this looks slightly different. And this one, as you can see, has got more than one colour of glitter running through it. So again, if this is a product you're interested in, if you go to my Amazon storefront, link in my bio, you'll find them in there and then you can link into your own Amazon as well. So that's where the sparkle comes from, you guys. So back to the painting. Just gonna have a little sip of my juice, bear with me you guys. Right. So let's see if this is dry, and if this is dry, we'll just tidy that up. That's nice and dry now. So I have got this is the ordinary Castle Arts pencil, so the difference between the two, apart from the fact that it either says watercolour or soft touch at the end, your watercolour barrels are hexagonal and your ordinary colouring barrel pencils are circular. 
yeah I got them on Amazon Prime Day deal as well I did and they've just sat there and I've only used them once which is pretty rubbish isn't it so sap green and juniper green again so this is one where we have an exact match across the two color ranges and I think yeah it's the juniper green first so with the juniper green I'm just going to go ahead and tidy up any areas where we've got a slightly clunky pigment and things so again I'm not going to press very hard I don't want to lose the watercolor look but where we've got sort of little patchy areas it just tidies it up over the top and this stem as well I want this to be a little darker than it is so we'll block color over that one and then tidy tidy up these middle areas so the reason again that I'm doing this is because a second layer of watercolor is just going to reactivate the whole thing again and it will be a big old mess so you just tidy it up slightly with ordinary colouring pencils and it just saves a lot of faffing around. Hi Maria. It's not going to take masses and masses of time over tidying this up, I just want to smooth out any any little wrinkles that we've got. So like do you see here where there's this hole in the middle. So by using this over the top, it just smooths it over. Takes the patchiness away. Oh Jeanette, hi, I'm glad you made it. You weren't sure if you were going to. I hope you're feeling better. You've just missed the sparkle pens being out. There we go. So sap green, I'm just going to do exactly the same again. So this is number 113, sap green. Again, just where we've got the odd little patchy area here. And like under here, see where the pigment's not quite there. And round here as well. Let me just tidy up. This one's not quite so bad. I'm just going to soften that transition between the darker green and the lighter green on there. And this one here, I think I'm going to add just a, a darker touch of the pencil over the top for this one. As well. There we go. And then let's see if these guys have dried. Yep, we have. Brilliant. So get these handful of pencils out of the way. So we're on teal green and hookers green. So again, we have an exact match up across the watercolour range and the classic coloured pencil range. So I think with the hookers green we need a slightly better tip on it than that there we go so which brand do i like says hylione um that's a difficult question because i've only really used um these ones to do any real coloring in proper watercolors i like my ink tents and that's a different kettle of fish because they're made of Indian ink. So that's a really difficult question. I think what I need to do is uh, do another piece, maybe using the Arteza one so I can compare them. I do like the Faber-Castell um, Albrecht Dürer pencils, but they're a much, much higher price point. These are proven to be quite nice. I mean, you can see how vibrant the colors are. So if any of you are sort of wondering which watercolours to get. Um, as you can see with these, for a reasonably priced budget pencil, you've got some nice pigmentation, some nice colours here with these ones. So this is just me darkening the very middle. So again, I'm not pressing very hard because I don't want to lose the, the watercolour look, but I do want them to have a slightly darker middle than this one. WH Smiths have got them, have they, Sam? 
That's interesting. I have had a set of their ordinary colouring pencils, but I haven't tried the watercolours. I have got enough pencils to sink a battleship, so I really can't justify <laughs> buying any other ones. Terrible. <laughs> but I do enjoy a, a little peruse in WH Smith's. and add um, the teal green over the tops. This is the more blue shade. So I'm just going to overblend this with that green. And again, just smooth out any little areas that's looking a little bit patchy. I think sort of doing um, pages like this with a watercolour base is a, is a nice way to to actually do an image because it's, it seems a lot less sort of work to get a nice looking effect like this. Yeah, I think you guys um, struggle over in Brazil with a lot of the different um, brands, Hylione. Isn't, is it Giotto one of the um, makes that you guys can get over there? Is it Giotto? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And Tris as well. Sure, I've seen Tris pencils. I know over there you guys can get the Faber Castell, um, is it super soft ones? Like a full set of 100 now, but here in the UK we can only get the 36 set, which is a bit of a shame. That's definitely a pencil that I'm interested in looking at. There we go. Let's do the same on this one. But yeah, I'm sure if, is it is it Tris? I'm not sure. Oh, I'm glad you're feeling a bit better, Jeanette. So I'm going to keep a bit of a whiter sort of edge on that. I think it makes it look slightly different to some of the other leaves. So it's definitely a much um, richer colour adding that over the top of this one. So I'm not having to press very hard with these at all. They're nice and soft to colour with, both the watercolour set and the ordinary colour in pencils. Let's just tidy this little guy up as well. And then what I might do is do some of the flowers with you next as well. Oh no, Jeanette, that's um, not good. Oh dear. Hopefully it'll be easy sorted and then you can get on your way, if not slightly late. How disappointing though. So let's just check this is nice and dry. Yeah, that's nice and dry as well. So I'm going back in with the hookers green now. And that would have been just what you needed as well, a bit of time away. So I'm not pressing very hard with this one at all because I don't want the centre to be sort of massively dark on these. In fact, it's funny because this um, hooker's green looks very different to the watercolour pencil when you put that down. It seems to be a slightly different shade. Luckily, it's working okay though. Fact, let me just stick to the same green while I've got this pencil in my hand. Oh dear Jeanette, what a shame. Have they said how long it's going to take to fix it? There we go. Do this little guy as well. So I'm just um, switching over to the teal green. And same again, and just finish off the edges with this one. Very 
that one had just gone a little bit sort of um, watery looking at the edges there so I'm kind of glad to go on here no time for it oh dear I'm not surprised that maybe with a couple more days of recuperation when you do finally go you'll feel that much better anyway how disappointing though I'm just going to tidy these edges up because they're just a little bit a little bit pale and we'll do this little guy and then let's do some flowers there we go so it's going to have a little look at these ones in the middle so I think the small petals here I'm going to do with the sparkly pens so I'm just going to do these um, the bigger of the petals with the watercolours I can just find the two colours that I put on one side so I wanted some purple so I've got purple lake deep and violet lake light so just keep those there a second because I know some of you are following along with me just to give you time to find those colours ah oh, Jeanette bless you thank you <laughs> I do think perhaps you'd rather be away in your motorhome than watching me though it's like purple lake deep so I think what we will go for I'm trying to think if I want to go dark to light or light to dark hmm. let's do dark to light start with this darker purple so it's the same again a basic two color blend so where I'm going to introduce the lighter color I'm just going to ease off on the pressure slightly but still leave a little bit of the color there just going to saturate that with a little bit more color than was coming out This is quite a nice colour. It complements the blues and the sort of pinky violets that I've already used on the page. That's obviously, I don't know where the other end of the... What even is that? So that's one of those sort of randomly strange lines that's not meant to be there. Because these are like a three petal, aren't they? What on earth? I don't know what that is. I'm just going to disregard it. <laughs> Colour that bit in instead. You know when you just look at something and it doesn't look quite right, I'm not really sure. It doesn't match the same shape as the other leaves. And it's on the other side as well. Hmm. Might have to make it into a leaf. So you can see how nice these colours are just using them dry. Really nice and pigmented. I'm going to do the same for this one and then we will have sparkle pens out to finish these guys off so I'm just going to swiss that round slightly so I can get to this a bit easier oh are you not feeling brave enough to get out into the shops yet Jeanette? I reckon if you pop a mask on and you choose your moment to go when it's a bit quieter you'll be okay. I know things are a bit crazier at the moment because here in the UK the kids are off for their main summer holiday so the shops will probably be a bit busier during the day but if you pick your moment Sundays are normally good Sunday mornings You'll hear me from here if I go into a Clinton's and I find them all on three for two because I'll probably just clear the shelf. Terrible. <laughs> it's like clear of the throat in the background from my other half there. That clear of the throat translates into, dear God, that's some um, more pens out of the bank balance. Am I right? Definitely 
going to finish these little leaves off with sparkly pens though. It's got to be done. So do the same again on this one. Yeah, I definitely think we're going to do the background for this one in ordinary pencils. I think it's going to be a bit a bit faffy trying to do it with watercolours. Too many small little nooks and crannies for colours to run and things. But I'll use the ordinary castle colouring pencils, I think, for the background. And then the whole page will be in the same brand. <laughs> right, so the lighter one of the, these two colours then is this violet lake light so this is a really nice sort of pinky purple so I'm going to start adding that over the top of the darker colour and then take that most of the way to the edge of the of the petal there and get a good amount of that lighter pigment down as well. Slight inconsistency with the, the lead on this one. This one feels quite, quite hard. I'm having to use quite a bit of pressure to get that onto there. It's probably the first one I've picked up where I've felt a difference in the softness of the lead in this pencil range. It's probably just a fluke. Um, but I'm definitely having to put a bit more effort into getting this colour down onto the page. I feel slightly different colour with that one for some reason. be interested to see if the um, ordinary pencil version of it is the same. So while we've got this this way, let's do this one as well. So you don't have to be too particular really, um, other than staying in the lines with these, because you're activating them with water, you can just crack on. So I'm not doing any kind of real blending with this at all. I'm just sticking one color over the top of the other. That's as technical as it gets with watercolor pencils because the magic happens when you activate them. <laughs> so let's do these ones as well. Have I tried the Black Widows? I haven't actually, no, um, Tina. Are they wax-based ones? I've seen the tins. I don't know if they're made by the same company that make the Monarch ones, I'm not sure. I have seen them. Hi, Elise. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did see, um, I don't know whether they were re-released as the Monarch ones or if that was just a different different range, but the one thing that did strike me when I saw them was that the tin looked a lot friendlier because I really don't do spiders. Um, so having a set of pencils in a tin with a really great spider picture on the front is, is not, not my idea of um, <laughs> pleasure at all. Even though it's a picture, I still it would still freak me out massively. <laughs> The Monarch ones have got like a stag or something on the front, haven't they? <laughs> so they look a bit more pink and fluffy. So um, I'm still colouring in World of Flowers, Elise. So Johanna Busford, World of Flowers. And it's the same image we were working on last week with the Castle Arts watercolours and ordinary colouring pencils. There we go. <laughs> so this is one of those weird moments that I was saying to you earlier on. So in the watercolour range we have Violet Lake Light. Now this colour is not in the ordinary colour and pencil range. The nearest I could find to it in terms of colour, and we are a couple shades darker, is this cobalt purple. So I have to wait and see how that looks. They have got purple lake deep in the ordinary pencils but not, not that other one so it'd be a little bit interesting. So let's wake up the water brush again. So again, I'm just testing it. Just give that a bit of a blot, it's just slightly too wet. There we go. So here we go. 
yep, still a little bit too wet. It will sort itself out. They, these are by far the best water brushes in my opinion, but when you sort of rewaken them up after you've not used them for a few minutes, very occasionally you'll get like a bit of pooling just at the start. And because we're going over this with ordinary pencils, I can just correct any issues with where the pigment is going on this so it's not it's not too much of a disaster. That's you just in from work, is it Elise? Hopefully you've had a good day. There we go, so we just activate these together. It's almost settled itself down now. So get all of this all done at the same time. There we go, and just lift up any extra bit of pigment, just move that pink around a little bit as well. So I'm just pushing a bit of the pink pigment into that white area and then we just blend backwards light into dark. So in this one we'll just wake up the purple. If you like it like this you can just leave it you don't have to go over in pencil but I just prefer to tidy it up in ordinary color in pencil as well so same again starting from the lightest edge and then we just blend the two together the brush has just got a little bit keen there again so just pick up the excess So what you find with these is once you've activated them, you don't really have to keep pushing the button at the sides unless you haven't used it for quite a few minutes. Really good water flow in these. They will cost you a few pennies more than some of the other brands, but they are nice and reliable. They're not going to sort of blotch your page up or leak water everywhere, which I've had with some of the other brands I've tried. I've tried Derwent, I've tried Pentel, and I've tried some sort of generic, I think it's Royal and Langnickel or something, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, so I probably spent what it would cost to buy these ones probably three times over by the time I've actually found one that works well for me. So if you look at these Caran Dash ones and sort of wobble a bit at the price, it's probably worth getting rather than sort of wasting money on some of the other makes. So those of you that have just joined on um, stream tonight, you may notice we have a new badges function at the bottom of the screen. So apologies to those of you that have already heard this, but the idea behind the badges is it's a way of you supporting the channel. So I think you can buy a badge for a couple of pounds and after Instagram have taken their little bit, the rest of it comes directly to me and basically I kind of recycle that into getting more pens and things like that. So. If you do feel inclined to buy me a badge, it's much appreciated. Ah, oh, busy day Elise, huh? Right, let's just see how we're doing with this, because this may not be quite dry yet. How are we doing? That's actually not too bad. So with this one, you remember me saying a couple of minutes ago that I don't have an exact match for one of the pencils. So in the classics, I have got the purple lake deep, but I've gone for cobalt purple because that looks as though it's the nearest colour to the watercolour one that I was using. So I'll give it a go and see how it looks. So I'm going to go in with the darker one first, so the purple lake deep. Try and keep my arm out of this other area that is still a little bit damp. And I'm just going to tidy up some of these edges. I'm not going to add loads and loads of this onto here. But just where we had that little pooling issue with the brush. And in here where I couldn't really activate it very well because the shape's quite sort of tinky. 
We'll just smooth things over slightly with the ordinary pencils. Here we go. So these work really, really nicely together, but obviously if you haven't got both sets, you could, you could use any brand of pencils really. Whatever watercolours you've got, if you just pop the one layer of the watercolour down, see if you can find like a corresponding shade in whatever pencil sets that you've got. Because I'm only using sort of castle over castle because I've got them. Um, if I didn't have them, I would just use whatever really. Whatever matches. So let's just tidy this up a wee bit. I'm glad I'm using sparkly pens there because I've wobbled all over the line on that one. That one's still drying. So this is my substitute, so the cobalt purple. So let's see how this looks over the top. So it's probably a couple shades darker than the base layer, but I don't think that's a bad thing. And it's blending quite nicely into the purple and then I can just taper that off slightly and we've still got that nice sort of watercolour effect at the edge there. So that was a lucky escape. I'm going to do the same with these ones. Let's just smooth this over slightly. Here we go. That's worked quite well actually. That was lucky. Yeah, that's working nicely. Phew! I think one of the other colours in the watercolour set that doesn't have its same equivalent in the classics is there's one called, um, what's it called, Signal Red or something? And that doesn't have it's same equivalent in the classic range either. It's really bizarre, I don't understand why. It just strikes me as a bit odd. I wonder whether it has the same colour but it has a different name to it. That might be something I need to investigate. Because that is very, very similar. How very odd. Any idea why you can't see comments on your laptop? I'm not sure, Jeanette. Maybe you need to pop out of it and pop in again. Sometimes you have to ref like re-refresh things. It could just be something like that. I've never like used Instagram on a laptop and stuff, so I don't know whether the screens are slightly different on there. Jamie's back. Hi, Jamie. I didn't know you'd gone. It doesn't tell me when you guys pop out. It just tells me when you're back. <laughs> This is just about dry, so we're doing okay. Adding this over the top, not getting into too much, too much strife with this. So let's just tidy up again. A couple of little sort of patchy areas that just need to be, just need to be sharpened up slightly. And again, this little shape in here is kind of tricky, really, with the water brush. So we just cheat a little bit and colour over that properly in ordinary pencil. Oh, I see. Oh, I vaguely remember you saying that you had a thing this afternoon, Jamie. I'm sure you told me that the other day. So same again. We'll just tidy over. And then I think we'll grab the sparkle pens. Making a good bit of progress with this one tonight. I'm trying to kind of like get on with things while I'm chatting to you because I have an awful habit of just stopping on these lives and not doing anything which kind of defeats the object so trying to see if I can just be a little bit more efficient this evening. It does help that I picked a couple of colour palettes before I came on which I actually didn't have time to do last week. Got myself organised because um, at work this afternoon when we go into our, our like one office slot a week normally we quit off at 4.30 and um, she let us go at 4.00 I was like yes! <laughs> Can't see how to buy a badge. Mmm, definitely investigating. Oh, nice to see you, Jolie. Take care. You have a little look later at your leisure. Or barring a disaster, this will be on Instagram TV and I intend to upload it to YouTube as well. There we go. Have I done all of them? See, I was blethering then and not paying attention again. Oh, dear, oh dear. So, colours then to sort of pick up, pick up with these ones. So let's get the little list. So 
couple of options really. I could go for something completely contrasting or I could go for like a purple. Just trying to see what would be nice with them. I might go for that light pink one actually. Let's go for light pink. This is where I take hours to find it in my pot unless I'm really lucky. Yep, there it is. So, whoopsie daisy, this is one of the mellow range of Pentel pens. And this is the light pink, so it has some metallic green and gold glitter running through it as well. And that will sit really nicely because we have some pink within these flowers anyway. So I'm probably going to leave the centre for the time being, but what I am going to do is add this in to these little petals in between. So one thing with these pens is they are um, very generous on the ink flow. So rather than sort of block colouring with them, um, what you kind of do is dab a little bit of the ink onto the page and then use the nib to sort of move it around a little bit. So it's kind of hard to see that that's what I'm doing, but that is what I'm doing. So I'm sort of dotting it on and then just using the tip to manoeuvre it round into the shapes that I want to put it into because you can end up with a lot of ink flow with these. So I'm just dragging that that ink around with the tip of the pen there. It's the same again, just dot a little bit on and then just lift the nib away from the page slightly and just use it to nudge it into those corners. Very, very generous ink flow on these pens. That seems to be a common, a common thing with them. So if I show you this under the light, depending on the light you have them in, we have the green tinge there and the red and the pink. See how they add a really nice effect to the page? And the same with that one, that's the blue and gold one there around the blue flower. So we have the blue glitter and the gold. And then the plain gold one is on that stem there. And you just see that shining. So although I do like to sort of colour, I do like realism in my colouring, it's very, very rare for me to do a page without adding some of these pens in, even if you just use them for sort of like dot highlights and things, because they do add a lot of a lot of prettiness to a page. And I can't help myself, I blimmin' love these pens. They're just wonderful. So if you don't have them in your life, what are you waiting for? You need them. Have a little look in my Amazon storefront to find the details and it will take you hopefully to your Amazon wherever you are. Um, I haven't forgot it, um, Luciana. I don't know what I'm doing with the middle yet. I may do it a different colour, so I'm going to leave it until these ones are very, very dry before I go ahead because I just don't want to risk contaminating the two colours. So you notice as well, look, I haven't done the white dots here either yet, the middles. So I'm going to have a little think about what I'm going to do with those. I haven't quite decided yet. There we go. That's looking super pretty. So I'm just wondering which other ones I'll be able to do real quick. Let's finish off some of these little leaves down here. I need to pick areas where I haven't like got the page wet and stuff. So what I'm thinking with this one is I want to maybe do some like brown stems because I haven't got any brown stems. So let me just look at my colour chart see which two are going to go nicely together. So I think I'm going to go for like a warmer brown. So let's go for thinking cinnamon and cinnamon and marigold. Let's try that together. So cinnamon. Oh, a little part of the petal. Do you mean this this bit here? I think I'm going to make it a leaf because if you look at the angle of those petals, that would go under that one. So I and there's a line. So I don't even know. I'm going to make this a leaf because it just doesn't look right to me. Not sure. So cinnamon and marigold. Let me just find marigold. So I'm going to go for like a warm brown with like an orangey yellow with it. Definitely gonna have to sharpen this little guy. 
But yeah, you know when you see, see something, Luciana, and you can't decide if it looks right? I just couldn't decide if that looks right. Because that petal should be at that angle. And it's it just doesn't look right. So I'm, I think I'm going to do a leaf there. That's what I'm thinking anyway. So, cinnamon. So this is number 012. And I'm not going to get into any strife because I've got no wet glitter down here. So I'm going to block colour all of this stem. And then we'll go from dark to light from the base of these leaves. So this is a nice warm brown. Um, it's kind of an orangey tone, so this should go quite nicely with the other colours I've already used on the page. I've got some yellows and oranges. I do like to try and sort of echo the colour palette of the flowers into the leaves as well. It just draws the page together. So let's see how these look, because I might use this colour further up on the page as well. But we'll see how it looks down here first. Swizzle that round and I'll do this one as well. Just keeping my other hand well out of the way while that gel pen's drying. Don't really want to stamp it all over the rest of the page. So again I'm pressing harder at the base of the leaf here and where I'm going to be adding the marigold in. I'm just easing off on the pressure and that's where I'll blend the two colours together. Oh, Jeanette, you managed to figure it out. Thank you. <laughs> so your one's come up red. So we've got a Hylione with pink badges and a Hannah with pink badges. And we've got Jeanette with a red badge. That looks so cool. It's really pretty on the screen. Thank you very much. So the Marigold then. So this is number 78. So I don't even know whether we've got this shade in the ordinary colour and pencils, but I guess we'll see. So I'm going to run one into the other, again leaving that tiny little white tip at the end of the leaf, that's where we'll be introducing the water pen into. See that even looks nice together without being activated with water, that was a good choice. Hopefully it will still look nice when I do activate it, that would be a bit awkward wouldn't it? what happens when you do off the cuff colouring and you haven't fully planned. I didn't think I'd get this far with you guys tonight but I've managed to keep going. So we're about quarter past eight so in the next five or ten minutes I'm going to be winding up for the evening. Oh hubby helped you find it, oh bless him. But that was sweet of him. I've never used it on a laptop before so I honestly don't know how it, how it works. I use it on my iPad and I use it on my phone but not on like a a desktop computer or a laptop. There we go. So I'm just going to actually look on my um, ordinary colour chart and see if I'm sure we do have the marigold. Yes, we do. Cinnamon. Have we got cinnamon? Just bear with me, guys. Oh, we have. Brilliant. So, cinnamon and marigold. them. So let's just compare them side by side. So that's interesting. So marigold colour is a couple shades lighter in the watercolour than it is in the ordinary pencil. That's going to be interesting to see how that works then. Oh and Agatha bought a badge as well, thank you very much. So let's see how we get on with this because it's quite a small little leaf so I think we might get on better with this little um, like fibre tip brush. So again I'm just going to test it on the back of my hand here so it's just a bit keen at the minute so I'm going to blot that dry because I don't want a big puddle all over the page. There we go. So let's do this one first. I'm going to do the stem. Still a bit keen. I'll just give that a little dry. 
just activate that all the way down. And then let's see how it works on blending these two colours together in this small space. That's quite nice actually. So I think if I'd used the ordinary water brush on that, I probably wouldn't have got as nice a blend on it. So this is proving quite a handy little gizmo. So I'm still blotting it in between just to sort of deal with the pigment, but you can just about see how you've still got that different line between the dark and the light colour there. So that's working quite nicely. So I'm still doing the same thing. I'm still doing little circles to get the two colours blended together. That's worked really, really nicely. So let's get this one done as well. So it is letting me stay within the lines on this tiny stem. So I'm not sure I would have achieved that with the ordinary brush. So this little um, red tipped brush comes in the pack of three that you get um, for the Caran d'Ache water brushes. You get like a medium tip, that's the blue one which you see me use most of the time. And you get a black one as well which is the, the larger one, which is better for sort of big background washes and things. And then you get this little gizmo, and I hadn't actually used it before. I'm trying it on this page and it's quite useful. liking that a lot. There we go. So let's let that dry up a little bit. So over the top of these purple flowers, I'm just going to use my white gel pen to add some little effect. So the white gel pen that I tend to use are these Uniball Signo ones. So you get um, a broad tip and a narrow tip. This is the narrow tip pen. My other one's lurking around somewhere, but this is the one that I'm going to use tonight. Looks easy, says Elise. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, actually. So I'm just getting this going on a bit of paper. Oh, hiya, Susanna. A long time no see. So this is possibly still a little bit wet here, so I'm just gonna have to be a bit careful with where I'm putting my my hand while we're doing this bit. But I think what we'll do is have just some little dots to finish off these petals with while we're waiting for those leaves to dry. Add a little one on there as well. Spin that round a little bit. So I've used the um, sparkly pens as well on some of these flowers to add little details as well. I do like a little pop of white gel pen on flower petals. Can't decide what to do with these middle bits. Not sure, I'll think about that. A little think about that so let's see if this one is dry and it is so I've got the same colors in the ordinary coloring pencils so all I'm going to do is what I've done with all the other colors and just tidy these up a little bit so this is the cinnamon one that I'm going in with first so I'm just going to there's just a couple of little areas on the stem that are a little bit patchy I'm just going to tidy them up and I may leave the marigold I may just add some of this let's see how it looks when I've added more of the darker color in because it's already looking quite nice just a couple of little areas where it's slightly patchy I'll try one with the marigold and we'll see what it looks like. Have a little bit more on this one because this guy's a bit bigger. It's the marigold here. This is um, a couple shades darker, I think. So let's just see what it looks like on a couple of them. 
that's not too bad that's warmed it up a little bit so we'll add some more of that on I'm not going to take it all the way to the end of the leaf though because it's looking kind of nice as it is there we go so this these will be the last couple of bits that I'm going to do with you guys tonight once I've got um I've arranged with the other colorist um sort of times and dates for definite I'll let you guys know but there will be a bit of a like a bonus um coloring session probably on Monday evening next week on here at the normal time but I'll have a guest colorist on with me on Monday and um we'll be coloring a couple of different images and having a chat about different sort of coloring techniques and things so that'll be a bit of something different for you guys to listen to so just keep an eye on my stories as soon as I've confirmed all of that I'll pop something up with a countdown reminder and then as usual on Sunday um, I'll be in the Johanna Basford Your Pages group at four o'clock UK time and I'll be carrying on with the little lighthouse page that I started last Sunday so those of you that aren't members of that Facebook group and want to be if you have a little look in my bio there's a link to both my own Facebook group and the Johanna Basford Your Pages group so I'm usually live um, in there on a Sunday afternoon as well as on Instagram once a week as well there we go yes a surprise guest Liz so more details to follow so let me see if I can just zoom out of here sorry for the wobbling around there we go so that's the progress on this page so far so I'll just show you guys the glittery pens sort of on the whole image so do you see how it just enhances especially look at that green on the orange flower isn't it beautiful so if you don't have these pens guys you need these pens in your life because they're so beautiful latina's loving the color along with the lighthouse yeah me too what i didn't love about that color along <laughs> with the lighthouse was when it automatically cut off on me that was a bit awkward so i couldn't upload that onto youtube because the flipping video had gone missing but never mind i'm sure it's going to be a bit smoother this week so we'll do a little bit more work on there I've already carried that on a little bit. Um, I put a post up about it a couple of days ago, so you may have seen that in group. So we'll carry on with that. So Monday, hopefully, um, I'll be live again with guest, doing a little bit more of this page um, and hopefully getting this finished up so that we can then concentrate on the background. So we're nearly there now, not much left to go. So yeah, thank you for your company. Thank you very much to those of you that have bought me badges this evening it's very very much appreciated so take care enjoy the rest of your week and i'll see you all on sunday on facebook so i'm going to love you and leave you now pop you out of my phone stand because it's so much easier to turn the live off from there so i'll say take care ta-ta for now bye